Welcome to GameSpot Live. I'm Greg Kasavin, filling in for Ron Doolin, who reviewed Freedom Force for us. Although Freedom Force isn't the first highly anticipated superhero game, it is the first to actually be released. Fortunately, there's a lot more good that can be said for it other than the fact that it simply came out. Freedom Force is actually an excellent game, and it does just about everything right, uh, everything that you'd expect from a game based on superheroes. Although it does have a few minor problems, it just has so much style and so many great characters and such a great interface that it's, there's really a lot to like about it. You can tell the game took its inspiration from the Silver Age of comics. It actually gets the effect down pretty much perfectly. Uh, the, the style and the art in the game looks a lot like uh, Jack Kirby's old, old comic books. And the characters and the music and stuff like that, it's all, it's all a great throwback to 60s era comics. So these aren't the dark brooding comic book characters that we have today. These are the really upbeat, uh, really heroic and, uh, and freedom loving heroes that, that uh, comic books were founded on. Although Freedom Force can be considered a role playing game, it's primarily a squad based tactical combat game. You control up to four superheroes at a time in a number of missions where, uh, for the most part, you're going to beat up a lot of bad guys and sometimes take on powerful superheroes much like yourselves. Although the game plays out in real time, you could pause it at any point to issue orders to your, to your various superheroes who won't really do that much on their own unless you tell them to. And every one of your superheroes has a wide variety of different abilities. Uh, they, can, they can fly, they can climb buildings, they can jump, uh, jump over and between buildings deliver one-two punches and pick up cars and throw them at bad guys and all kinds of great stuff that you'd expect from a superhero game like this. It's all in there. The game uses a really realistic looking physics engine. Uh, everything reacts as you would expect. When you, when you sock a bad guy, he goes flying and you can send people flying off of roofs, uh, you know, and knock them out that way. So the tactical combat system is actually quite complex. Uh, you could really use the, the physics engine to your advantage. And there are lots of different uh, types of properties that attacks and, and the various characters themselves can have. Like you could have characters made of different materials, uh, made of metal or uh, made of rubber or stuff like that. And they all act differently and will uh, have different reactions to different sorts of elements, whether, whether it's a fire-based attack or an ice attack or some kind of mental kinetic ray or anything of the sort. The combat looks great. You see comic book style fwooshes and thwacks uh, appear on screen to go along with it. It's uh, just really exciting to watch. But there are just a couple of small problems that keep the combat system from being just about perfect. For one thing, although you can pause the game at any point, the game won't automatically pause for you. So it's not a true turn-based system and sometimes You'll have to split up your squad and have different characters in different places, and you might prefer it if the game would just pause automatically. Actually, that's related to the other problem with the combat, which is that there's no mini-map on screen, so if you do split up your squad, you have no way of knowing really where the other guys are and where enemies are relative to them. Sometimes you can't see uh, who exactly you're fighting, and, and it's hard to tell where you're being attacked from. One of the great things about Freedom Force is that it kind of breaks from the mold of comic books in that the characters don't just start out with certain powers and that's it. You could actually develop them and give them new powers or soup up their existing powers as they gain experience. So you can really start to specialize your characters either by giving them a broad variety of abilities or just beefing up the abilities that you particularly like. That's probably the big reason why Freedom Force can be considered a role-playing game, although in the missions there are also a number of side quests that you can sometimes go on, which will give you more experience if you decide to solve them. The missions are arranged in short storylines, like issues of a comic book. They're all very story-driven and, and feature lots of interesting characters. All of these storylines are pretty much self-contained, although there's an overarching story that ties them all together, too. Although the villains are great, it's probably the actual Freedom Force characters that you could control who are the best thing about the game. Uh, th there's just a really great sense of personality about uh, just about all of them. And you, you've got your classic uh, comic book style um, inter-team rivalries and 
love stories and other soap opera types of things going on in the, in the background during, during all these missions, and it helps keep everything really interesting. As if there weren't enough characters already, the game actually includes a very powerful uh, character creator where you could uh, even model your own characters and, and skin them and uh, create all of their different abilities and so forth. You can actually use this to recreate a lot of your favorite comic book characters. Later on in the campaign, you can recruit these characters into your team, and you can also use them in the game's multiplayer mode, which is basically a death match. Uh, there could have been more done with the multiplayer mode because it's uh, it's just strictly played against other people. It would have been nice if you could have played cooperatively through the single player campaign. Freedom Force's single player game is quite replayable and also quite long. Since you can develop your characters differently or even use your own, needless to say there's a lot you could do to play the game differently from one session to another. You might not expect a game like Freedom Force to turn out so well. You'd think that with a premise so interesting it could just scoot, scoot on by just with a cool comic book concept. But underneath all of the capes and the, and the masks and so forth, Freedom Force is actually a really great game. <laughs>